Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Iron Panther Presents. Uh, today, uh, Stacey and I shall be discussing Crack, uh, the documentary on Netflix. Um, after current, Now that we're reviewing Snowfall uh, Season 4, which is all about the crack ep epidemic, um, embodied by the Franklin Saints, um, I wanted to educate myself on what crack really did and who really did it. And was the CIA really responsible? I wanted to know all this stuff. I want to start. Um, so Netflix has about an hour and a half long documentary uh, talking about crack. And uh, I got to say, it's, uh, it, I was irritated by it um, because this, it should have been called crack. It's the white man's fault. Like that, that's what the title of this special should have been because the point of it is to somehow make the very, very uh, false claim, really, that the reason why Rick Ross the black man behind me created crack. Let me say that one more time. The black man behind me created crack and then bragged about he helped other black men make more crack and sell said crack to other black people and made millions of dollars doing so to the point that crack spread across America but somehow it's all the white Republicans fault. Stop it. It's the white Republicans fault because first it was black folks are killing themselves with this drug. We're not gonna do anything about it. That's racist. Then when the people in the black community start complaining about the violence and the murders and the sales of the drugs, the government says we're going to start doing something about it. And then that's also racist because they start arresting drug dealers and, pe and people who are killing each other over drugs in the same black neighborhood that they're selling the crack to the same black people. Mind you, the drugs in this particular special. So Rick Ross, black man behind me, says his drugs will come from the Nicaraguans who are brown. Just for the record, they're brown Latinos, okay? So brown Latinos are selling and creating cocaine, bringing it to America to sell it to a black man who gives it to other black men who sell it to black people, making these people addicted to crack. But somehow in all of this brown blackness, it's the white man's fault. Maybe the white man taught Rick Ross how to cook the crack, and therefore, it is the white man's fault. If the white man, if he would have said the white man taught me how to sell crack and then tasked me to sell it specifically to my own people, nobody else, just my own people, I would have somewhat, somewhat maybe said, maybe, like maybe somehow they, they did it. This, let, let, so even at the beginning of this special, the beginning of special tar, starts off with chapter one and white man Reagan, Republican Reagan, that his administration brought more prosperous money to rich people in the cities, particularly to talk about cities like New York and LA and how more money were, were in the cities. As a result, the production and shipment of cocaine came to America for rich people. This documentary actually glorifies cocaine, that it was, it was a party drug. Everybody wanted to do it. They got black people in this thing. They got white people in this thing, singing the praises of the addictive murder causing cocaine. It wasn't cocaine's fault. The fault is because of Reagan's economics Black people couldn't afford cocaine. That's the message I feel that they're giving us, that if Black people could have afforded cocaine, they wouldn't have got addicted to that bad crack. I'm sorry. They wouldn't have made the bad crack. More specifically, Rick Ross wouldn't have made the bad crack. That if, if he could have sold cocaine to his Black, black uh, community, everything would have been fine. No, it wouldn't have been fine because cocaine was a problem. Cocaine was hurting America. It was so much cocaine coming to America that the price of cocaine fell because they were saturating the market. Yeah. Out of that, black folks, 
finally rose up to the point that they could afford to get their hands on a little bit of cocaine. And instead of not selling it and not using it, they said, we got to make it rock so we can make more money off of it. Because Richard Pryor, Richard Pryor almost killed himself. Right. It started off as free base. And then I think the ether, ether is very volatile. So if you heat it up, you can burn yourself up, basically. And we saw that in Snowfall where the white guy was cooking and his arm was burnt up. But instead of Richard Pryor's almost death being a warning against crack, this special made it seem like it was an advertisement like, oh shit, the message we should take from this is why are we going after expensive white cocaine? We can have crack. Right. So it's kind of like, okay, this is a horrible analogy, but whatever. But please. <laughs> I had never eaten Popeye's chicken until I was in my 30s. <laughs> but do you know why I ate Popeye's chicken? Because it was a freaking riot at Popeye's Chicken. It was on the news. Popeye's Chicken ran out of chicken. And it was absolute chaos. So I thought to myself, this must be some really good chicken if people were rioting because of the lack of Popeye's Chicken. And that's what got me eating Popeye's Chicken. Since four, if a wealthy comedian like Richard Pryor is willing to burn himself up to get high, the MSB is some good shit. He can afford cocaine, but no, he goes to the free base. So it must be good shit. And that's my other problem with the underlining message of this documentary. That they want to set the foundation that Republicans made Black people poor. Never before in history have Black people been poor. It was, on the, it was Reagan specifically. Well, according to my research. Please, 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 please. Drop that internet knowledge. And you? this is from a Harvard study, and I'm probably going to have a hard time finding it. But apparently, uh, then up to like the 70s, like through the 70s, Black people were being more educated. We had we owned more businesses. We had dual parent households, all that good stuff. And then somehow in the 80s, when was Reagan elected? Oh, in the 80s. Go on somewhere with this, right? Oh, please, continue. continue. So at some point, we were coming up, and then we hit the 80s, and then we started doing this. That's because crack came. Also, in this special, in this but special... Before the crack. In this special, they say that the fact that Reagan stopped public assistance, the fact that he stopped public assistance ruined further ruined the black community therefore saying they weren't prosperous and that we weren't coming up that without public assistance we weren't anything now the drug dealer um to stacy's right the one on the bottom he made he, he made a story he said that he his family used to use uh the food stamps because back in our day food stamps looked like monopoly money and he's like that's what we had to eat with and i and i remember that i mean i, I my family used that stuff too um and he said he tried to work at McDonald's and that was only $3 an hour. And he's like, I can't live off this. I got mouths to feed. So my friend came to his friend came to him and said, I got crack to sell. And he said, yes. Why do you have mouths to feed? Plural? Yes. So I'm assuming you already that's broke, but you got mouths. Okay. That's a whole nother video, but anyway. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that is a whole other video. But my, my, my point is, they want to say that poverty is the drive, it was a driving force in drug use, but that doesn't make sense because rich people were getting addicted to cocaine and using it on a regular basis. Richard Pryor, a very wealthy black man, was on cocaine and decided that he said, with all the resources available to him, he wanted free base. M M um, Mayor uh, Marion Barry also a pretty well-off man being the mayor of D.C. was also on crack. Then you Isn't got the, all the Canadian guy, uh, was he governor or something? What a little short, chubby white guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was, was it crack? Was he on he crack? He was cracked out too. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so 
no money provides you the opportunity to use more <laughs> drugs okay but no poverty does not make does not automatically mean you have to go buy drugs how can you buy drugs when you are poor that doesn't make any damn sense like the fact that all these poor these their self claim poor black people decided that crack was going to help us come up and when they make all this money do they help their communities do they help the people no they do not they buy more drugs and sell more drugs and they buy weapons and they kill each other in their own neighborhoods then they're surprised when people go crack dealing leads to murders so maybe we should do something about this like maybe we should stop the murders which are happening in black communities by black people so yes the black people are going to be the target and the audience of the actions because you when did you ever see on tv white people and communities fighting over crack territory i don't even i've never even heard of that or the latin that they showed one latino uh drug former drug user and newspaper reporter in the, in this special they showed at least the two the three drug dealers behind behind stacy the one at the top with the hat on and rick ross not once not once said they were wrong for what they did that they were wrong for making crack they were wrong for getting their own people addicted to it for helping the murder of people either by the use of the of, of the drug selling of the drug or just fighting over drug territory neither one of them apologized at least the guy at the bottom who got shot five times at least he said at the end yeah maybe maybe this wasn't the best way to you know to act when i was younger maybe i maybe i did some wrong things there was no sense of, of responsibility none of it instead of saying it was the white man's fault because the cia was running weapons to iran taking the money from the Iran sales, giving it to the Nicaraguans. The Nicaraguans were using the same smuggling planes, brown people, mind you, to bring cocaine to America, to sell cocaine to America. And somehow that one drug operation is responsible for the entire cocaine and crack epidemic. And therefore it's all racist because CIA let it happen. Was there any stats? Uh, do you have any research on how many celebrities have died over cocaine or drugs in, in, in general? No, not celebrities. Prince died of drugs, overdose. Michael Jackson died of drugs, overdose. Whitney Houston, oh, so? Allegedly. Whitney Houston and her daughter died of drugs. None of that had anything to do with poverty. None of that had anything to do with the white man. These people were rich and chose to do these drugs and died because of it, okay? Chris Farley died of drugs, I do believe. He was a, 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 a SNL actor, died of drugs. John Belushi died of drugs. I'm like, several high-level people, no matter what the race, no matter what the gender, were addicted to drugs and that had nothing to do with the CIA or racism. These people had the ability and chose to put their money into drugs. Now, certain people like Aerosmith, they spent most of their career on drugs, you know what I'm saying? And they're still alive somehow. And they go back, they go back and forth out of rehab, you know what I'm saying? But like, they can't let it go. So if you say, so one time, there's this one woman in this special. Um, she said she lost her children. A lot of them lost her children. But the, the one with the braids, who was like, I lost my child. My child was murdered. So I turned to coke, to cocaine, to crack, to, to deal with the pain. I people deal with their own pain in certain ways. I'm not blaming her for that. I'm saying, but when she starts saying that crack was like chemical warfare on the black community, and she asked questions like, who brought this to us? Who did this to us? The answer is us. The answer is Rick Ross, okay? And other black men like him, that's the answer. But not one time does she go, the black people who sold me these drugs are, are responsible. Like, why did you do this to me? She much rather blame the government because it's easier to blame somebody else. It irritated me. I mean, 
you what you think. Am I, am I going too far? Okay. And then let's talk about women, right? So in this special, they made a point of saying how crack in particular, the, the men who sold the crack, mind you, the three, the two men behind next Stacy who sold crack to black women are like, yeah, you know, crack had a terrible impact on black women in the community. It's, it's really terrible how, you know, it, it destroyed them. And therefore, you know, our society, motherfucker, you were selling it to them. Well, they admitted that there were some of them selling to their own mothers and saying that, um, well, they're going to get it from somewhere. So the guy at the bottom, the guy at the bottom told the story how one of his friends said, like, he was like, fuck it. So they're, I mean, they're going to have to get it from somebody. Might as well get it from me. And I'm like, and then they make, and then they showed how many times we as black people have made fun of ourselves and the crackheads in our communities. You said you used to sing that song too, that they were singing that one video. Guilty. Which song was that? Do you remember the song? Was, um... Was it your mama's own crack rock or something? Yeah. It was something like that. Yeah, we used to call each other crack babies and ooh, your mama crackhead and we used to say all the type of stuff like that with kids. So, but this special never, but uh, the, the guy with the hat, the guy with the hat right there uh, above, above Stacy. This man is, there you go, there you go. This man smiles as he remembers the times when women sold themselves to him and his fellow crack dealers for crack, that they only fucked them to the point that they, when they got too far on the crack, they weren't fuckable anymore, basically. And he doesn't apologize for this. He doesn't say this is wrong. He's like, yeah, you know, sometimes you got to work them out until, you know, the crack get to them. Until they look like Wanda in season four. A snowfall. Yeah. The two, and he's like, yeah, they're not. The toothless thing was like a bonus. All stop so they don't bite. I mean, I understand where you're going with that, but um, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, we people that look like us did it to people that look like us, and this special wants to make it all about racism. The head of the CIA, so which I didn't even know this, I did not know this. The head of the CIA at in the 80s, late 90s, whatever, early 90s, he went to Watts and had a room full of, of Watts citizens, you know, mostly black, as you would imagine, mad at him. Like he's the reason the black people in their own community is selling crack to other people in their own community and killing each other. It's the CIA director's fault. It's not like you can, you, you, you can kiss my ass on that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like they contributed to the crack and then you don't even acknowledge this special doesn't even acknowledge the Colombians. The Colombians, Colombia is the and always has been the top producer and, and supplier of cocaine to America. To this day, they're still number one. But somehow you don't mention the Colombians because you can't use racism for that because they had nothing. So they like, they don't talk about the saturation of cocaine. A lot of it still comes from Colombia. Brown people in Colombia selling and shipping cocaine to America. They don't mention the, the DEA, who's practically started to fight cocaine. Like, because and the DEA agent, uh, Kiki Camarena, who got murdered, trying to fight cocaine. Like, America did, <laughs> as much as we use drugs, the government worked a lot to fight them. And then when the cops are, the cops who are, who are racist for not stopping it, and then are racist for trying to stop it, they acknowledge that the black drug dealers paid off a lot of these cops. So then they were a part of the situation. But somehow it's still racism. You don't blame the black drug dealers who are who are paying off these cops. Yeah, because in the beginning, they kept saying that cops look the other way. Everybody looked the other way. And they were making so much money. And then the violence started. They started beefing with each other. And I think we were talking offline. It's like, okay, this is a business like any other business, right? So you got McDonald's, you got Burger King, you got Wendy's. They're not doing drive-bys over burgers. They're just coexisting. You got your corner. I got my corner. You got your corner. The customer may like your little flavor of crack better than mine one day. You got a little taste for Joe's crack one day and Sammy's crack the next day. I mean, it's all supply and demand. Like, why y'all shooting each other? So the statistics said that the 
homicide rate for 14 to 70 year, 17 year olds quadrupled during this period. And then up to 24, it was maybe like three times as many. So not only was the crack messing you up, y'all were killing each other because of the crack. Not because you were using the crack, but because you wanted to make more money. The, I think Rick Ross said he was making like a million dollars. A million dollars and after after operating costs, he was clearing 200 to 300. Like 20, 30%. But this was like a day or a week or what? I mean, let's say a week. It was a lot of money a lot of times, but the yeah. man, but like Franklin Saint, and that's why, and you know, as, as Stacey pointed out, like like Snowfall is is generally based on 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 Rick Ross because like 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 Franklin Saint, Rick Ross said he bought a theater, he bought like he bought businesses, like he and he made other black people rich off of cocaine. I mean, off the crack. You know what I'm saying? Hurting his own people in the process, While simultaneously destroying the bottom part, but you got a few up here that are becoming millionaires. I wanted to he open up a shelter and a rehab facility. How many years did he do? I heard I heard he did go to jail though. A long time. I can't remember how long. My, my, my barber, I was talking to my barber about this and he was like, he did, he did at least 20 years, like 20, 25 years. And I'm like, and he doesn't apologize that he don't even acknowledge that. I went to jail for 25 years. I deserve to go to jail because this is my fault. And, and this document is like, we're still living with the impact of the crack epidemic. I'm like, well, then Rick Ross still should be in jail. Like that's, that's, that's a war crime or some shit. Like if you're comparing this to chemical warfare, then he is the orchestrator of this chemical warfare on black people. And he should not be out celebrating this shit. Like he shouldn't be like, yeah, you know, it was the 80s, you know, whatever. Like it's no, no, absolutely not. It's kind of interesting that he's kind of like the poster child for the crack epidemic. Like he's almost hailed as like this innovator. The pioneer, the pioneer of the crack epidemic. Yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, he does the interviews and the books and the, the speaking and, and, and it's not like he's banished to like some corner of the earth where he's destined to live alone because no black people will fuck with you. But if you voted for Trump, then, oh no, we can't fuck with you. Like, it's just weird. Like who we choose as- Role models, the people we-, we, models, we are representatives. So, so let, let, let thank you. That's, that's, a good, that's a good segue. So in this special, they make a point of showing you all the white men presidents, mostly Republicans that, that, that um, that accelerated the the war on drugs, and they start they start they start with with Reagan. They just they make fun of the fact that at least he made a fucking effort to be like just say no to drugs. When I was in elementary school in the eighties, I had to just say no pin on my on my chest. Like they hand them out. They made an effort. Oh, that's stupid. Tell the kids just to say no. That's that's ridiculous. We can't. Well, we had the dare program with the dog. And yes. There and talked to us and everything. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I, I want to say no to drugs. Now, I, I'm black, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And, so, and, and, you know, I grew up in the 80s and the 90s, you know what I'm saying? And, like, there were no there were no drugs where I lived. Like, not like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't. the only time I, I saw mar marijuana being used once in high school. And no, we have reason now. Don't get into it. I mean, I didn't. I mean, it was so much, like, my friends got into that, but, like, I just, I, I'm not going to say I grew up in the neighborhood where I was, you know, dodging bullets and crack dealers every day. Like, that's not, you know, how, how I grew up. Um, but even then, it would have been my community's response, but they did it. Like, I would not be looking to the white man to be like, it's their fault that we are killing ourselves. Like, I would have been like, it's my neighbor who's killing me. It's my, it's my cousin who's selling this. Like, we're doing it to ourselves, freely doing it to ourselves. You know, and, but anyway, president. So anyway, Reagan started it. He's white, he's racist, he's a Republican. Then it was Bush took over, had to be tougher than Reagan. What did Reagan, say? what did Reagan say? Make America great again. Oh, that's right. That's how much, that's how much they were like, this is all about Trump. Like before we get started on this, we won't be like, this all led to Trump. The KKK leader, President Trump, that's some kiss my ass on this, but but you're right, you're right, you're right. I, I, they made a point. They made a point to be like, Reagan's the one came up with the idea of make America great again. You see what he did. Was standing next to 
Papa Bush. Pop, that's right. Who became so Reagan two term president, Papa Bush one term president. Who came after Bush? Bill first Clinton, black president. The white man that we, for some of us, call the first black president, Bill Clinton, and his wife Hillary Clinton, which called black people like us super predators because of drugs. This documentary and fourteen. Um, the, the documentary uh, also acknowledged that Bill Clinton signed the legislation that put more of us into jail and mass incarceration. But somehow, somehow, most of us act like that didn't happen. Like he's still the one. He's also the president that got impeached. Let's since we're comparing like like you know administrations and shit. Like Clinton sent a lot of us to prison for dealing drugs or being associated with drugs. Clinton is the one that got impeached, all right? But Who yet- Who was in the Senate when all this was happening? Huh? Who was oh, in yeah. the Senate? And, 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 Biden, and Biden was a part of it. Biden, Biden was, was in Congress, and so was Kerry. Uh, 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 John, John Kerry. John Kerry was a part of this shit, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, so let's remember that when, when Obama comes out, and, I, and, and, and all of a sudden, who's there next to him? Helping bring up the the black votes, Bill Clinton. But it's the Republicans' fault, right? It's their fault. It's their fault that crack happened. It's their fault that a lot of us went to jail, right? Not Bill Clinton, huh? Because he played the saxophone on Arsenio Hall. Like it can't be his fault. And then fast forward to when Hillary Clinton ran for office, she's like, "I got hot sauce in my in, in, in my purse. I'm I'm just as black as you. I'm on CP time. You somehow don't remember about the crime bill, huh?" Like you, you don't you don't remember that? Like, and some of us act like we don't remember that, but it's all Trump though. Trump did all this shit. Like it's stop it. Like, stop it. Like, if you're gonna hold anybody accountable, it needs to be the Clintons. If you're gonna hold any white person responsible for mass incarceration of black people, it's Bill Clinton. Okay. Eight year president. He did that shit. Just saying. Just, oh man but you're right though bill clinton celebrated rick ross celebrated most of these drug dealers and in, in, in this in this in this special most of them were like it happened i mean what you want me to say like no remorse whatsoever yeah we got two apologies one from this guy yep <laughs> the one on the bottom the one on the bottom yes yes this one. yes it was a, a female yes the one who Love also got shot guy. up because she got shot through the back came out her chest and then she drove herself to the hospital and i guess that's what it takes for you to go you know what maybe drug dealing is not really my thing like maybe that's not good for me that would do it for me i, I i'm just I, again obviously yes the cia helped bring cocaine to america yes the government did a very poor job of stopping drugs, but they did a poor job of stopping alcohol during prohibition. You're not going to stop people from getting what they want. That's why alcohol became legal again. That's why marijuana at the state level at many states is legal again, as legal now, because the government has figured out once the people want it, all you can do is tax it. That's it. The government's process is... Set up programs to help... To help people, people. To help people. To help people though who can't handle it. But marijuana is, is quickly becoming legal across America because you can't stop it. I, I as much as they, they want to blame the media for this, it's it's interesting that I've seen like again growing up in the 80s, you saw all the anti-marijuana stuff, all the anti-drug stuff. And today, any TV show you watch, despite the fact that both of us and all of us watching this video, we love power and, and snowfall. Two shows which glorifies cocaine distribution, selling, production, in no way, shape, or form makes any of these people villains. Um, but regular TV shows, marijuana is celebrated. Still illegal at the federal level, but marijuana is celebrated. You see more anti-smoking commercials than you see anti-drug commercials. Mm -hmm. But tobacco is addictive. Cocaine is addictive. Anything that's addictive to people causes people to make non-rational decisions. Some of them, I mean, you know, if you, if you are a, a caffeine addict, ask yourself how many times have you braved bad weather 
to get yourself some coffee because be damned, you're going to get that coffee. If you were in the hospital, I knew I know people who were in the hospital just had surgery and they're walking themselves with their IV bag downstairs so they can smoke a cigarette because they're addicted to it. Addiction doesn't matter what the thing is, it can kill you. Tobacco, Chris Rock said it better than me. I mean, he's like, alcohol is addictive, but it's legal. Tobacco is addictive, but it's legal. Both of these two drugs kill people on a regular basis, okay? But they're still legal. But why? Because America can tax it. Because America, you know, can, can profit from it in some way. Marijuana now, again, widely legal because they can profit from it at some level. Cocaine, not there yet. Yet. We'll get there. What was it? Iowa or Idaho? One of those states pretty much decriminalized everything. All drug use? Mm -hmm. Um. So it's 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 it's, it's it, it was it was a, it was interesting special to watch. I, I I again it just I just cannot take the whole victim mentality. It's not our fault. It's not our fault. It happened to us. I didn't really understand a lot of the contradictions. Like, okay, co co we we consider crack as a black drug, right? Mm -hmm. But even in the documentary and even through my research, they always say, oh, well, there were more white crack addicts than black crack addicts. Now, I'm sure maybe that's the thing because they're just generally more white people. So there will just generally be more white crack users, right? Because yeah. it's the same thing when they say, oh, there are more white people on food stamps than black people. And it's like, duh, there are more white people, you know? Um, but remember they said that at the end of the video that like there were no white white, white arrests white arrests during the war on prosecuted yeah throughout this whole 80s 90s crack period right so i was like how is that possible now that's some racist shit. so i did a little research and um so what i found it says that Okay, so there's 94 federal district courts in the nation of the United States, right? So in 19 of those, there were no white defendants on federal level. But there were charges on state level for white people, just not on the federal level. And only in these 19 federal court districts. And you would ask like, why would that be the case, right? And these weren't like, um, like these were like major cities like Chicago, New York, places like that where there are obviously white people. So it wouldn't make sense that there would be not any white defendants. Obviously white people. <laughs> so, and, and so it included like Chicago, Indianapolis, Indianapolis, Houston, stuff like that. So, um, but it looks like they got prosecuted on a state level. So I was trying to figure out like, why? Well, they, that's, that's pretty racist, right? Was it, was it crack or was it cocaine? It was crack. Because Specifically crack charges from 91 to 95. Yes, I, I, I see that. So, it, but it, I'm, I, I don't know excuse for that, and I, I but and that does sound wrong. When they, when they when they look back at the crime bill of Bill Clinton's crime bill, they say that again, it it more criminalized crack than it did cocaine, for example. Right. And it took it took a very little amount of crack to get the same sentence as a whole bunch of cocaine, and somehow that was racist. Crack was more addictive. Crack was specifically causing the violence in these communities. Like it wasn't, it wasn't cocaine. Like it was the crack. They were going after the crack dealers. I mean, cocaine was a crime, and they were fighting crack. But even as th as this special tried to say, cocaine was everybody's drug. Cocaine was everybody's friend. Everybody did coke. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Like everybody was doing it in like like sixties, seventies, eighties. Because I remember, like my best friend when I was little. Her dad used to have like little baggies 
of cocaine. Yes, it was that it was the thing. Everybody did it. It's just like weed. When you see little baggies of weed in people's house, it was just like, okay, this is reefer, as they called it. <laughs> it's so silly. Like, <laughs> that, that, I was like, I, 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 that wasn't part of my, my, my normal everyday life. Yeah, but whatever. But my, my, I never my, saw crack. My, my, my point is, though, I'm, I'm just saying, like, co- they, this special tried to make it seem like cocaine was nothing. It was nothing to fear. It was nothing, you know, you, it's just black people just couldn't afford it because of Reagan. But like it, it, it was nothing. But like it was crack that was killing the community. It was crack that was creating all these wars and all this violence. So well, of there course, cocaine wars. There I, were. There I mean, again, was, when you ignore okay. when you ignore the Colombians, you're going to ignore the, the the Colombian drug war. Like murders were happening internationally over this and continue to happen over this. But like that's not the narrative because you go down that road, you can't use racism. So they're like, let's focus on, you know, Rick Ross and therefore the Nicaraguans. And therefore it wasn't, it wasn't Rick Ross's, you know, like greed and total lack of caring for his own people that helped fuel the, the crack epidemic. It was the white man that, that, that helped him do it. But, but I'm like, but I mean, of course, crack was the worst part of it, or we wouldn't be having this special about crack in particular. Like it wasn't the drug war. It seemed like cocaine was, um, it was more the byproducts, not cocaine, crack. It was more the byproducts of crack, like the violence and the robberies, yeah. more so than the actual addiction of crack. Yes. Versus like the opioid and heroin, where people are like literally just dropping dead. Like, but it's also the byproduct because that leads to like meth. Like, I mean, that's also a byproduct because once the, once they can't get opioids anymore, then they turn to like meth and like heroin, and then and then mm-hmm. that became crimes. So, I mean, they were still, but I mean, but yeah, I mean, they, they didn't have people necessarily outside, but like the drug pro, it's a drug problem because it's addictive, and anything addictive is gonna, depending on your per, who you are, is gonna cause you to do harmful stuff to yourself or to other people. Like crack is just one of many versions of that. Right, and the, the little crackhead lady that was in there, and she was saying that I went to jail nine times, and she was, I guess, shackled <laughs> to other crackhead uh, women who were taken to jail, and she felt like this was slavery. Um, no, 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 and. and- that irritated me a lot. I was like, no, our ancestors were, were stolen and or sold, depending on the situation, to into slavery. In no way, shape, or form was there any choice whatsoever to, to be the point to be like, I'm taking a drug and somehow I ended up on a boat and now I'm a slave. Like, that's not how that shit worked. Like, you know what I'm saying? And we, can, we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't, to me, diminish slavery to justify the shit that we do and what happens to us. And this, and especially in this particular case, like I, that ir- just irritates the shit out of me. And I'm like, no, that's not the same thing, ma'am. And again, if you want to go that route, it was likely black people that put you in that position historically, as apparently happened to us in the African continent because Africans sold, you know, a lot of black people to slave, to slave owners and traders. But black people did that to her. Black people put her in that slavery. If that's where she wants to go with that and they and it, and but somehow that's not acknowledged that's not acknowledged to take some kind of personal responsibility to be like why did we do this to each other all those drug users and and dealers in that it should have been the users all those women who were users they should have been lined up with the dealers and let them ask those dealers the question how did you put me in this situation why would you do this to our people that should have been a conversation mm-hmm. I would have been on board with that. Like, how much money did you make off of me? I want my reparations. They, thank you very much, Stacey. Yeah, the TVs I stole just to get some crack rap. And it's often, and they, 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 and they, and again, I feel like the story was white Hollywood and white media exploit the image of the black crackhead. No, 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 no. Black people do that. They showed a scene and from John, John, black John Singleton, the late John, uh, John Singleton's. Uh, boys in the hood of a um, Cuban Gooding Jr.'s character talking to a crackhead mama 
and how that was a terrible image. That was written and produced by a black man. That, 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 that was not the white man's version of a black woman. That was a black man's version of a black woman. Okay, like we did that. Dave Chappelle makes a very funny crackhead. I still love that dude. When he, <laughs> when he went to school, when he's like, you know what dog food tastes like? Just the way it looks, delicious. <laughs> I was like, Dave Chappelle at a minimum, every, every, every comedian, every, every, really, every black comedian, man or woman otherwise, have made fun of crackheads for a good part of their, uh, of their career. How they did Whitney Houston, like, Ooh. crack is whack. We heard about that for what, 15 years? Maybe? I still hear about it. I was about to say it, actually. I was about to say that shit was hilarious. I mean, but I'm like, that's what we do to us. We make fun of us. We make fun of the, of the crack epidemic. We make fun of crackheads. Snowfall included. You know what I'm saying? Wanda is not seen as a sympathetic character. She is seen as an example. And women in particular, because you don't see no, no men running around crackheads scratching up. It's women. It's Wanda and Melody. Wanda is an, a, a joke in this show. She's not seen as a, 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 as a cautionary tale. The only thing we're supposed to care about is Leon's love for Wanda. That's where we're supposed to feel bad. That that Leon is like, I'm sorry, and I wish I could do something about this. But but at least at least Snowfall, as I said, at least Snowfall makes some effort to show the the downside of of drugs on on, on the on, on our people. At least they make an effort because power does none of that shit. Like, and nobody overdosing except for Proctor's wife, except for Proctor's ex wife. No, you the girl in the club. That That's overdosed. right. It was a white woman, so that doesn't count. But you know what I'm saying, but but yeah, but. And, 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 White, huh? Proctor's wife was white. Yeah, but you, you nobody gave a fuck. Nobody was like, "Wait, we got to stop these drugs." So people like this poor white woman who got none of that happens. You know, so they just keep it moving. They just keep it moving. Also, back to book three. Um, Kanan's family should be selling crack. If it's the nineties, the early nineties, drug dealers in Queens, broke ass Queens, it should be crack. Like they should not be selling. They should not be at the cocaine level. Like they really should be selling crack. I hope. It would be not, I don't think it would be historically accurate. They're all of a sudden they're, they're, they're pushing off cocaine to their neighborhood. So it'd be, it'd be interesting to see uh, Kane and his family in, 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 the, in the crack, uh, during the crack epidemic. And, and that'd be interesting. And then the cop presence because of it, that would be an amazing show. It would be like The Wire, but in New York City, basically. That'd be, that'd be awesome. Anyway, uh, anything else? For this document, for the whole notion of crack babies and how the guy was saying that um, crack was no more detrimental to the babies than alcohol and smoking, and the whole misnomer of crack babies wasn't really a thing. You remember when he said that? I remember, yeah. I'm saying, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, so the research I found. Um, <laughs> It's all like circumstantial because there wasn't any empirical data being collected, right? They weren't testing babies for addiction and all this stuff. It was just like, like from 84 to 89, there was like this massive crack epidemic, right? That's when it really was like at its peak, right? During the same period of time, you had more fetal deaths and low birth weights among black babies. So it was assumed that these were crack babies. However, white people were doing the same shit, 84, 89. They were using drugs and crack, cocaine, all that stuff. They didn't have the same level of low birth weight in their population. So why is that? Is it crack and poverty? Is it like, is there a combination, combination of factors combination. that's causing the low birth, birth weight babies? But it was only like 84 to 89. By the time the 90s came, it, it just kind of gradually went back to normal. And by 2000, it was like non existent. And they were saying that, oh, all the crackheads were too old to be giving birth. So it didn't matter. You know what I mean? That's what I read. Like, 
I mean, obviously, they did say it like that, but basically, uh, it's, they, a, it's summary. They it's aged summary. out. They aged out of the, of the, of yeah. the, of the baby making range. Which also means primarily we're dealing with analysis of women, not That's the true. men. So, what were the male crackheads doing? Were they sucking dick for crack too? Were they, you know, what were they doing? They were in jail. Cause most, I guess, most of them, most of them were dealers, and therefore, they're probably they probably were in jail, really. You may be right. I mean, sucking dick for other reasons, but I mean, still in jail. You brought up shit. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, if crack make you suck dick for it, then I mean, so, a mouth is a mouth, right? So what, what did what? What did you th- what did you think of the sexist analogy that when, when the black man was like, well, you know, men, you know, could rob and steal to get crack, you know, like, but women, you know, they had to. They it was had to the eighties. I'm telling you, there's a such thing as man shit in the eighties. Look here, Chris. Versus women shit in the eighties. Look here, Chris. <laughs> like, well, I wasn't driving in the eighties, but I was like, you were what? I was like, oh, uh, uh, what? Oh. I was not, but. I did not know how to pump gas until I went to college because that was a man thing to do. Or if you live in New Jersey, because you can't pump gas, it's illegal. Like the the the, the attendants do it for you. I didn't live in New Jersey. All right. But I'm just saying, but the thing that he was like, well, you know, women just don't have the upper body strength to, to commit crimes. You know, they gotta they gotta suck dick. I was like, what? And then right <laughs> after that, the woman, the guy, the guy with the hat on was like, Yep, yep, they were sucking. And I was like, I was like, oh man, this is. This is wrong. We did this to, and then, and then the the neuroscientist who was like, "Why did they do this to our people? You make good decisions. You joined the Air Force. You still got gold caps in your mouth, but you joined the Air Force. You okay. went to you went to college and did something with yourself, and then you come back and you see your fellow drug dealer, you know, um, you know, community, and you're like, no, that's not me. That's not who I am." And you did better. The white man didn't make you, you know, get out there and sell crack. You decided to, go, to to do something with your life, and you did better. And you grew up just as poor as they did, apparently. Yeah, it's that a lot of men didn't just go off to the military. Or once you make 500, 200 grand, how about you stop, Rick Ross? How about you take that money and go somewhere? It said he bought a car, and he wasn't old enough to drive. and didn't Yeah, the guy on the bottom. The guy on the bottom. So you got money to buy cars and stuff, but you can't like go to get an apartment outside of the city and take your family there. Since you got all these mouths to feed, take your mouths out of the city. Yes, and go away. You were making money, like they were bragging how much money they were making. The one guy was like, I think the guy at the top. No, there's no drug dealers down the photo. The other drug dealer who was like, I had so many shoes, I wore a pair twice, and I just stopped. That's a whole other, that's a whole other you know thing about why we we don't know how, what to do with money. And that's, that's 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 a whole other thing. Um, it's, I'm, 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 again, it was. I'm not saying crack. Obviously, crack hurt us as as a community. You know, as as a as a nation. You know, what I'm saying, but you can't just make everything racism. At some point, you got to you acknowledge that we did this to ourselves. This is one of those things that we did to ourselves. Okay, crack was fubu for us by us. So we need to acknowledge that. Or you can't fix it. You can't move forward if all you do is blame somebody else. I'm saying. What you got? Anything else before we go? Uh, So this goes into the opioid crisis. Like, we didn't really get into... Like, if they were making so much money in crack, they never transitioned over to the next big thing, which was the opioids and the mess and stuff like that. So that was interesting. I, I'm not sure why that was. They were arrested. Shit. If they were arrested, they were murdered. Oh, there's still people out there dealing. I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody at Rick Ross's level was either jail or, in, or, or dead. I'm pretty sure. Um, and the ones, the ones that did get away with it, they got away with it. So like why why would they get on TV? I think some I think I think there's a very 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 small group of black crack dealers who got out while the getting was good. Jay Z. <laughs> it's like no, it's like him and like um like Biggie like they did small stuff and then they, they then they built a reputation on that. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I did a little bit, but you know, I wasn't really out there, but I act like I do because it helps me sell records. Yeah. Wink, wink. <laughs> you think Rockefeller just came from nowhere? <laughs> that shit costs money. <laughs> hey, hey, he married Beyonce. It's fine. You know what I'm saying? They're doing all right. They got three kids. They're going to be all right. Four, three. Twins. Three. three. Twins and, and, and the oldest, right? I ain't got no, in my damn business. My point is, how you apply your money? Because people people will compare, as Chris Rock did, people will compare this to prohibition. That when predominantly white people were making alcohol, what at the time was illegal, they were therefore the drug dealers of their day. And law went after them. Okay. But when they figured, when the government figured out that they couldn't beat it, they taxed it. They made it legal. And they say, you know what? And then all these big families kept all that money, apparently, except for, you know, like Al Capone, who ended up dying in prison. You know what I'm saying? But like everybody else who didn't go to jail, uh, uh, you know, they still had the money. So then they became, you know, the Kennedys. You know what I'm saying? Um, money got, you got to use that money somehow. Um, but it's interesting they didn't touch on like gangs and crack in the documentary. And then they also didn't touch on the AIDS epidemic that yeah. was kind of popping off around the same time. Yes, but that's because the AIDS uh, crisis is connected to uh, like heroin. Like crack you smoked, you didn't inject yourself. Like that's that's where- Yeah, it's- but if you turn in tricks to get it, you put yourself in certain situations. Yeah, but I, I see your point, but that, that would be a different documentary. But I mean, but I, if you're gonna tie drugs to that, you gotta go for the HIV, you know, for the for the um, intravenous drug use, what's this? Um, which I'm assuming is heroin. I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was the '80s, you know. What I'm saying so. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things going on in AIDS you can break up. But that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. AIDS, AIDS in the black community. That could have been an interesting thing. Um, that, that that'd be an interesting documentary. Um, the homophobia that came out of it across America. I mean, not not just not just in the in the black community, but it'd be interesting to, sh- to show that in the black community. Um, how do you fight external racism and internal homophobia? So a black gay person is being, if you feel white people are against you because you're black, that's external. But if you hate your own people because they're gay, that's internal. So if you're a black gay person, then you're fighting your own people and quote unquote the white man because neither one of them want to accept you. I don't know. Anyway, that'd be an interesting documentary. Um, all right, anything else? Any more? Any more research that you got for us? Uh, Marion, Maryland was the number one state of crack, crackheads, and Newark was the number one city. Wow. Mm-hmm. Atlanta was number three. Damn, we can. You can even be on top of drugs. Guess what the lowest uh, states were? South Texas. Dakota. South Dakota. White people. Montana, Omi, North Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa, Maine. You see a pattern here. Um, <laughs> oh! Well, what are their rates for opioids? The white states. <laughs> oh, check it out, check it out, check it out. They're, um, um, Chris... Ice Cube, Ice Cube's um, album Death Certificate. That's when he was hardcore, like after he left NWA, but he's still hard, right? He made a song about crack dealers moving to basically white cities. Like LA is too hot for us. We need to move to Nebraska or some shit. Um, and how they set up crack houses and you know that kind of stuff. And then the cops finally figured out that you know black, black men from, from LA is probably not a good thing. Um, and that's what the song said. Um, and then they got arrested. So to, to your point, to be like, that's how, that's, how, that's how Rick Ross said, you know what, guys? We got to go to where they don't see a lot of Black people. And maybe we can start there. It's an open market. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're, not, you're not really, there's no competition. Mm. But then you're also perpetuating a stereotype, right? Because if you're only Black people are in town and you bring drugs with you, then what these white people are going to say is Black people bring drugs. Because the Black people person that moved into my town brought drugs. How you do it? have to recruit like a Braden or a Tommy. Or that's nice. Right. That's yes. Where were all the white people in this special? Where were all the white drug dealers that supposedly existed? Where were all the white crackheads? According to this documentary, it never happened. I'm like, where are the all these? Well, you know, it was really the white people that were selling the. For some reason, they only caught the black people on camera, but it's really the white people in the back that were doing all this shit. 
Uh, I'm like, then where were they? Just just show me one. Show me a Tommy. Show me a Tommy or a Braden. There was at least one Tommy, one at Braden. At least. Playing and crack. At least. It had to be. That's what I'm saying. Where the fuck is that special? White crack. That's what I want to see. White crack. Like, that should be a whole special just on that. The white side of dark crack. I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to put this together, but. Never mind, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, um, all right, this, this is a lot. We made our own documentary. Thank you, Stacy. Stacy brought facts. I'm just saying random shit. But anyway, that's, that's why you watch these videos, right? Okay, um, anything else? Any more facts? Yeah. All right, all right, guys, that's the video. If you're still watching this video and you're still on our channel, uh, thank you. Uh, we, we appreciate it. Uh, if you're leaving us at this point, uh, we understand we had a good run um, and uh, hope you'll be back. Um, Motown somebody left me like three times since I started this channel like she she joins and then she leaves like I say I say some random shit about women or something and she's like I'm out and then she'll come back so it's a weird relationship we got I mean she may be back by now I don't fucking know anyway point is uh if you're new to the channel please subscribe to the channel um social media right so let's be social like on the video comment on the video comment on the video share the video um if you want to dislike the video that's fine oh yeah I got to mention when we did one of our two uh, police brutality videos, somebody wrote and said that I was someone that looked like I would sell out my family for white approval. <laughs> you do kind of have that Brian Gumbel look. <laughs> and to that, I say, fuck you. Okay, uh, but and uh, but uh, if you feel that way, not you, but like whoever wrote that comment. I know, not me. I'm just like clutching my pearls. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that. Yeah, for if you want to put that, that's fine. You can put it in the comment. I'm saying my response will be, and I can't put that in the comment, but my response will be, fuck you. Okay, um, just in case to make sure I said that properly. Um, that's how I grew up speaking well. Okay, uh, uh, anyway, guys, if you, what's up? You're already trying <laughs> to talk like them white folks. <laughs> Oh, I'm again. I'm not. I'm not Candace Owens. I'm not the Hodge twins. You know, we're not diamond and silk. I'm just saying. Sometimes you gotta just gotta call it and be like, "We did this shit." So just acknowledge it. Just acknowledge it, man. Can can always be racism. Can always be racism. Um. Anyway, guys. Uh, as Jerry Springer always says, who has a lot of crazy people on his show, black or white. Um, please take care of yourselves and each other, and we will see each other again for the next drug show, Snowfall, this week. More crack. More crack. <laughs> Because crack ain't whack when Franklin saying, uh, oh, I'm going to add the hashtag uh, Franklin got to pay. I told uh, it's going to be awesome.